Hi guys, <coughs> this is the donor uh, Radialva that I got to fix the main one. Um, and so uh, I've put the other the dial back in here upside down. It doesn't really matter because it'll all be coming apart again. Um, so what I've decided to do with this guy, since he's been so badly bunged up and uh, damaged here, and uh, is uh, I'm the plan right now is I'm going to strip this right down, down to the metal, and rebuild it from scratch and make it as it should be. Um, so that should be uh, quite an interesting project. Um, take a while to do. Um, I've put the other one back together because I'm waiting for uh, some rubber grommets. So I've ordered up lots of different rubber grommets from uh, uh, various vintage radio sources uh, in the hopes that some of them will be usable. If not, I'll have to get into making one. So while I'm waiting for those to arrive, I thought I'll get started on this, and along the way, I can just happen to see if the gr if there's a rubber grommet in this that is still usable. Okay, so here's the grommet on the donor set. This uh, we can see the uh, nut there. This is the uh, where it's mounted, and uh, surp no surprise, it's uh, hard as a rock. So. Uh, uh, it's not going to be any good. Uh, it's cracked all over, I'd say. It's not going to take too much use for that one to fall apart as well. So, back to plan A, which is uh, wait for the new ones to come in the mail. So, I guess first step along the way will be to uh, get this monstrosity out of there. So, I'll just uh, cut all this stuff back and... Uh, it's just held with one, maybe two bolts on the bottom here. And just get this uh, massive weight out of here and uh, go from there. So we yeah, learning as we go. I took out the audio valve and um, the base is loose. So um, I thought if, the, uh, if it works in the tester, We'll uh, re-cement the base, and then I looked and I thought, okay, this is not a 25Z6. This is a 6 volt heater. Um, so obviously, uh, when the chap, whoever did all this, um, was wrestling with the fact that there was a, a 25 volt heater in one of the tubes, he just decided to um, Make life simple and replace it with this uh, six volt tube. So um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll test see if it works, uh, but it's unlikely this will be going back in uh, further down the road when we uh, get to put this little beast back together. Um, so yeah, I was wondering how um, where the twenty five volt supply was for the audio output valve, and now I know there ain't one. Okay, so I've snipped all the wires on the transformer here and I've removed the mounting bracket that was on here which I'm pretty sure is the original speaker mounting bracket that uh, was just modified, shall we say, to uh, mount a transformer and some extra holes were drilled in the chassis. So um, that's that out of the way. So. Uh, yeah, we'll have to uh, start tidying up as we go. And there's the uh, audio output transformer uh, disconnected. Again, modified holes in the chassis. Um, but at least the transformer looks to be in pretty decent condition, so hopefully it's okay. We'll find out. Okay. I think the next to experiment with would be trying to get this whole front plate off. And so since I don't have a diagram for how the dial cord goes, I'm going to have to be real careful about how I photograph and set all that up. But hey, we're going to give it a shot. Okay, so here's the plan to get the front plate off. Um, the big challenge is the entire dial cord mechanism is all fixed to the panel. 
except this big pulley here which is clearly connected to the condenser uh, tuning condenser so the plan is to remove the three mounting points for the front panel to loosen the uh, big pulley on the shaft here so that it can come away and as I move this pulley off the tuning condenser shaft I push through the 6mm bolt from the front because conveniently there's a hole here in the front panel which I assume is for this purpose and I basically migrate the big pulley from being on the tuning condenser shaft to being on this 6mm bolt and then I'll uh, fix it on there so that the whole front panel assembly including the big pulley has all the dial cord mechanism intact um, I've tried mapping out how the dial cord goes in case the whole thing flies and something comes undone but how this how the uh, how the cord goes around this pulley is proving a little bit of a tricky problem to solve because it's all one piece of string but it goes in a hole here it goes around a few times and then it comes out a hole over here so I'm not quite sure exactly how that works and I thought I need to get it out so I can follow it more accurately um, so that's the plan for getting the uh, getting the front panel off let's see how we get on okay theory is holding up good so far so now you can see how the front panel uh, comes off and the whole dial mechanism cord is all contained and the only thing you have to be sure is that you don't let this guy come away from the panel here um, but I think I'll stop there because having got it this far I realize I don't have any 6mm uh, nuts so I have no safe way of securing this at the moment but at least I have the whole front panel off here um, and so we can uh, work on it a little bit more safely now um, but uh, yes I want to uh, get some washers and some nuts on this to uh, to fix it so that uh, it's not going to be wobbling about and risk anything suddenly flying off so uh, yep I'd call that a, uh, a proper a good step forward so I guess next will be to uh, remove the uh, tuning condenser itself but I'll leave that for the uh, for the next session. It's getting late. So here you can see quite clearly how the front plate, uh, the third mounting point, uh, goes onto the chassis through this uh, rubber grommet mount. And um, so I've ordered up a bunch of grommets uh, for the other set, and uh, I guess hopefully also for this one. And yeah, this is completely crumbled away on the inside. It just sort of started to immediately just crumble away when I uh, tried to see if I could get it out of there. Um, so that's definitely a goner on here too. So um, yeah, at least you get to see it quite clearly here. Um, because on the other set, I didn't take the front panel off. So you could actually see what I was talking about. Uh, for this... Uh replacement audio output valve, the uh, 6V6G. Um, I'm not even sure this will ever be used in this set again since I may go back to the full original. Uh, but in any case the base of this is loose. So uh, I'm just going to tack it temporarily with uh, some uh, medium viscosity super glue just to stop it getting any worse. And then I'll use a more appropriate glue to fix it up uh, later on once I get it through the valve tester and make sure it's uh, worth hanging on to. Okay, change of plan on the sequence here. Uh, to get the tuning condenser off, there's a couple of mounting screw bolts from underneath here um, through rubber grommets up into the uh, condenser itself. You no access to those at all uh, while this whole coil mechanism is in here. So the whole uh, band selector mechanism has to come out um, and hopefully if I undo these two nuts and take this one off 
there will be enough clearance that I can rotate the whole thing and get it out. Let us see. Okay, that's the uh, band selector stuff removed. Uh, the actual caps on this one, I don't know if you can see it, but they do seem to be in rather bad condition with lots of cracks uh, compared to the other set. So, uh, yeah, we'll let's see how we get on with that. And now that that's out of the way, you can see the two screws, uh, the two bolts uh, for mounting uh, the tuning condenser. You can also probably see, I'm going to get some light on here, how the, uh, the wires to the uh, electrolytic are all, uh, the insulation is all broken down. So, uh, usual stuff, all got to be replaced. But probably if I do the same as the last one, it's in here that I'll put my uh, my uh, capacitive dropper. So here we are with the uh, condenser just removed, and uh, I think you can see how the uh, the rubber grommets at all. In fact, they had sort of deteriorated and formed a glue because I had to fairly leverage the thing off to get it off there. So, yep. It'll all have to be replaced, and uh, I think we'll uh, give this guy a good soak in the ultrasonic cleaner. Interestingly, uh, unlike the previous set, even though all the wires are, um, all the insulation is all frayed away and everything, there's no leakage out of this electrolytic uh, at all. So everything is nice and dry and clean in here, unlike the other set, which had leaked gunk everywhere. So. I just hope it means uh, I'm not going to have too much trouble um, emptying out the contents of this can. Right, so there's the electrolytic uh, removed. And as I say, apart from the status of the wires coming out of it, um, it looks to be in, uh, it would otherwise seem to be in good condition. But we know it ain't. So, on the top side of the chassis, that just leaves the, uh, the two IF cans to come off. Um, Having a look at the wiring underneath, there's been so many changes to this, like it's got a parallel heater chain instead of a series heater chain. So uh, I don't think I'm even going to bother too much with how it's wired up in here. I think I'm just going to rip it all out uh, and use my other set as the model for when I go putting everything back together. Um, it would seem uh, I can't trust anything that's in here, uh, so I ain't about to. And here we are with the two IF cans removed from the chassis. Um, and since they're both different, there's no real problem with which one goes back where. Um, I did give this one an initial bit of a clean up just to see how badly this uh, dirt and grime had, you know, how badly pitted all the uh, metal was. And uh, yeah, they won't be perfect, but I think they'll clean up pretty well when, when the time comes. So, that leaves just uh, getting the remaining uh, components out of the underneath side of the chassis. And as I said, I think I'm just going to rip it all out of there and uh, start over. Okay, strip down is um, almost done at this point. Um, curiously, the only piece of rubber in the whole set that wasn't deteriorated is this one right here, um, which is where the mains cable went in but I suspect that's probably not original and that was probably replaced uh, whenever this thing was uh, modified um, a potential showstopper that I've just discovered as I removed all the components from in here I realized that um, in the diagram there are at least three coils so there's uh, L2 right there there's L1 right beside it, and way over here we have L3. And I remember those coils very distinctly in the uh, other set that I did. But I didn't see anything that looked like coils when I took all these components out of here. So, uh, hmm, that might be a challenge. Right, I think that's it for this session. Uh, next we'll get on to uh, 
cleaning things up and uh, yeah, see where we go from here. Okay, um, at this point, chassis is pretty much stripped down. Um, all the components are removed. Um, and so the only decision now is do I drill off the valve uh, tube sockets off the chassis or not? And I guess having come this far, why stop now? So I'll have a look if I can find suitable pop rivets of the right size and uh, if I can I'll drill them off and then I'll give this chassis a good chemical cleaning and uh, we'll prime it and uh, paint it so that it looks nice and uh, nice and new. So uh, all of the components, uh, as I said, I don't know uh, from these passives whether any of them will get used again. They all look in pretty bad shape. Um, the uh, hardware stuff obviously will get reused, and the rest of the main subassembly stuff is uh, in the box down here. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, time to start. Uh, so I guess the next thing will be to empty that large electrolytic, clean that out, and then start cleaning uh, the rest of the uh, mechanical pieces uh, before I start putting everything back together. Uh, more to come, one hopes.